He famously won the Grand National at 66 to 1 on Sue and Harvey Smith's Aurora's Encore, and he joins me now. Ryan Mania, very good morning. Good morning, Nick. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, more importantly, given the trials and tribulations that you've been through through the last four or five years, how are you and how do you feel about your, your sort of new career, if you like, the next phase of your career? Um, I feel absolutely brilliant. Um, it, coming, coming back has, has gone really, really well. And I can't thank owners, trainers, um, you know, my agent enough for, for making it all happen. So wind it back for us. You'd won the Grand National on, on Aurora's Encore, 66 to 1. You were at the top of your game. You were a widely respected rider. What happened next? Um, I had real issues with my weight. Uh, I was waking up 11 stone every morning and having to sweat off seven pounds. And it really, really gets to you mentally. Um, he sort of saw no way out. And I, th I think the only thing I thing I, I could do was was give up and, and and I realized that that was the wrong thing to do now but at the time it was it felt like my only option uh, you say you say that really affects you mentally I've talked to a number of jockeys who've, who've struggled with their weight and they say that you know when they're when they're having to waste so aggressively and, and get the weight down each and every day either by hot baths or saunas or running in sweatsuits you know, by the time they would actually get to the race course their their fuse was about this long is that is that how you found it yeah, I just I felt mentally drained, and as I say, I, I didn't see any way I could improve the situation, and it was it was really really difficult. And I didn't really like the person that I was becoming. I was grouchy and sort of shut myself away from the world a little bit, um, and it wasn't really very nice. And so, thankfully. Uh, it, it didn't last very long and I, I gave up. But as I say, it was the wrong thing. The best thing I could have done was actually seek help and advice. And, and that's my major regret in, in not doing that. I mean, we know that this has, had a, this has had a good ending. When you were away from the sport, r remind us what you were, what you were doing when you, when you were completely out of racing. Um, I was, I was uh, looking after fox hounds, so uh, working in, in, in hunting. Um, it was it was a natural progression. It was something that I enjoyed as a hobby, and, and it was never never going to be a long term thing. But it was it was something that filled a void at the, at the time. It was something very easy to to get get into. Uh, but what it did do is allow me to take a step back from from life a little bit, and I was able to get married, start a family, and w without giving up. But that probably wouldn't have happened because, as I say, I was being a bit of a a miserable, miserable um, person, and um, no one would have wanted to have married that. But luckily, you were able to take a step back, and you were able to get married and and, and start a family. Was did you just feel that there was something missing? Did, you know, ha ha remembering all the good times in the saddle was that was that nagging away at you during that time? Yeah, I, I think it was always going. To, I was always going to wonder what if if I'd kept riding, what what would have happened, uh, what level could I have got to, could I have, you know, was I good enough? And so there was always something. I rode in a charity race a couple of years after I retired, and I thought then I really need to go back, and I felt as though I wanted to go back, but at the timing just wasn't right. And I was very lucky that Sandy Thompson offered me an assistant trainer's job. Um, a couple of years after that and I saw that as my opportunity to to really try and get my weight under control and give it another go. And so you went into that assistant trainer's job with it already sort of half in your mind that if this went well you could be back in the saddle. Yeah I remember saying to, to my wife that once I got once I got the job and said that I really want to give it a go she, she told me I was mad but obviously supported me anyway and um, I, was, uh, I, f I found a dietitian, lost the weight very healthily, and um, luckily it all came off, and, and here we are. And uh, you, you say it as though, as though it was kind of obvious that if you'd seen a dietitian and approached it like that in the first instance, it, it would have all worked. But does that, does that underplay the hard work that you've had to put into to managing this yourself? Uh, yeah, it, it, it did happen really easily. Once I saw the dietitian and he educates you and explains things that, that I, I didn't know before, 
um, it is actually a lot easier to to maintain my weight. Um, you know, when I was struggling back back in the day, it really. I, I saw no way out. I didn't know how to control my weight. I didn't know what I was doing right and what I was doing wrong. And, and now I have a real understanding of it. Um, it does require a lot of work. You know, I can't just eat what I want and, and not do any exercise, but it's it's something that I'm willing to do. And the, the support I have from my family is is amazing. And, and ultimately that's that's why I do what I'm doing. And that's why I've came back to, to, to make them proud and, and to support them. Just just above your uh, your shoulder there, there's there's the picture of you in the silks of Aurora's encore after that famous victory in the in the Grand National. Tell me about how Sue and Harvey Smith have have supported you through the last few years. Uh, well, when I when I did retire, um, I went down to see them to firstly apologise for for leaving them in the lurch at that time of the year because it was November, just coming into a busy time. And they, they said then that the, the door would always be open, um, you know, don't be a stranger. And, you know, four years on and I've made a comeback and, you know, I thought, they'll, oh, they'll not want to see me back. But here we are, I'm managing to, to pick up some rise for them. And they've been absolutely true to their word. You know, there's probably um, no more loyal people in racing than, than those two. And just to have have their approval that, you're, you've came back and you're you're doing doing the right thing has has meant the world to me. Uh, just watching you celebrate after your your national win, you seemed to be enjoying it at the time. And I remember doing quite a bit of media work with you the year after, and you, and you did seem to appreciate. It. When you look back on it now, is there a greater depth of appreciation for what you achieved that day? I think I think I still don't believe that it's happened. Nick, to be honest, it's. Um, it, it feels so so long ago now, and at the time, I don't think I def I don't think I absolutely appreciated what what had just happened. I was I was a young lad, and you you sort of you take it as it comes, but I, I definitely didn't appreciate it at, at the time for for what it really was. And so, are these comeback victories, and you've pulled off two incredible wins this season? Are they, in some respects, even sweeter than that? Yeah, definitely. See, see you at midnight's win at Sandown was was one that's it's that that was just amazing. Um, for him to come out of retirement the same time as I did and to to win a race, a nice race like that. Um, I don't think I, I've ever. That's the first time I've actually celebrated um, crossing the the winning line. Um, I was punching the air. I've never really done that before because it, it meant it meant so much and um, it was it was an amazing feeling and it and it again it just makes you feel like you've done the right thing in coming back and, and um, come out of retirement. What makes this horse so popular and so special and so treasured by the people that are closest to him? Um, I, I don't really know. I think it, his, his way of going, you know, he likes to, he likes to bowl along with the running and he, he really is just a, a tough, genuine, bold warrior. Um, obviously, the story of him having to retire due to injury, and then, you know, told that he would never run again, and then coming back, really makes the the, the story even better. And now he's he's 13 year old, and he he's, he feels he feels like a, a nine year old. It's it's unreal, you know, how Sandy's managed to nurture him back to full health and and go and win a big race well two big races he, he had a nice performance at carlisle in the veterans race that uh, last season before COVID, and it's just he's just a real he gives you everything um wears his heart on his sleeve and he's he, he's just he's just an unbelievable animal and how is he and are we going to see him again soon I am. I'm hoping so. San, Sandy mentioned running him in the Midlands National, but I would think that he would maybe need a run before that. But uh, I haven't spoken to him as in regards to his plans. But he's he's very well at home, and he's came out of his race at Sandown perfectly well, which is um, which is a great great thing. And if that was a a wonderful heartwarming triumph, you you pulled off one of the the upsets of the season and a sensational upset because a horse that we'd all we'd all consign to the to the um, history books as a complete nutcase, uh, York Hill, who, who came out and won the rehearsal chase. I mean, can you work out how that happened? Yeah, absolutely not. Um, <laughs> before he ran at Ain Tree, the, the, the time, time before, he went into the race feeling well, looking well. 
uh, traveled through the race and just just didn't finish and we obviously we sort of know now that that's maybe just just him he's just a bit temperamental and what what happened at Newcastle was he basically took off with me for three miles and um it was it was the owner Dave Armstrong's plan to to bowl along in front you know because he usually drops in and trying to get him settled and he said no just let him roll on and it and it worked and since since then he's been really well at home and and raring to go and not sh- not 100 sure where he's going to go next he's entered in the sky bit uh, next weekend but whether he goes there or not i don't know but um he's certainly a very tricky but obviously very talented horse and i said after the rehearsal that day that i, I god i would have loved loved to have ridden him back in the day when he was winning grade ones he would have because he gave me an unbelievable feeling and you know just such power and such ability in there it's just just managing to get it out of him and well I, I conducted a very long interview with Sandy after after see you at midnight's win at Sandown and I said these were the these were the first two great acts is there a third act is the what's the final part of this amazing Thompson training trilogy and he says he's got it and he we eventually got it out of him that it was it was Bell's Hill and that he was going to win the Grand National and I, I, I sort of thought that if if that was the case and it did happen and you were the man who rode him that would just be perfect symmetry. Has that has that crossed your mind? <laughs> well, I'd be lying if I said it hadn't. But you know, we're a long way off um, entry, and uh, Bell's Hill still needs to get there. And um, you know, we we don't really know if you know we're. It's difficult to get these old horses back to form, and we don't know if he's going to be there yet. So we've got a long way to go, but. You, you, you can but dream. Um, I never never could have dreamt that I'd, I'd win it once, so winning it again would be pretty unbelievable. Just tell me, Ryan, if you can, the difference between Ryan Mania driving to the races in 2012, 2013, and, and, and Ryan Mania driving to, to the race course to take a ride now in, in 2021. Um, a completely different person. Um, I have an amazing wife, amazing kids. Uh, they they are ultimately what keeps me grounded and keeps me happy. And I just I go to the races with a smile on my face, just absolutely loving it. Whereas before, I you know could have taken it or leave it, leave it. You know I was was wasn't in a good place, and and now I'm absolutely loving what's what's going on and. It, whether it's a, a good horse, a bad horse, an, an indifferent horse, and a big race or a small race, I just just love going and and enjoying it. And long may it continue. And as long as I can keep owners and trainers happy, then 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 that's the main thing. And now, if you if you do keep yourself mentally and physically in good shape, a, a jump jockey's career, without wishing to tempt fate, can can last a you know a significant period of period of time. Yeah, it can though. As, as I say, the nutrition and um, the, the balance of nutrition and exercise has moved on so so much, even since I retired, that that it does prolong your career. And and hopefully, I can at, at least get to forty. I'm thirty two now. I've got eight years. Um, that's my first goal: is to get to forty, and and then see what happens after that. But you know, injury dependent, hopefully I can maybe get a little bit longer. Um, so long as people are still still giving me rides and still wanting to use me when I'm when I'm an old man. In 2013, you won the Grand National on Aurora's Encore. A year later, there was another shock result. And the winner of the race was uh, Rule the World, ridden by, by David Mullins, who has himself retired because he wasn't really happy with, with his life in the saddle this week at the age of just 24. You must have, you must have looked at that story and, and felt some significant empathy with him. I definitely did. I, I, I felt for him because although he might be do, going through a different thing from from what I was, um, if it's just slightly, um, I know what it's like to to sort of not have your heart not be in it. And although my reason was my my weight, which was causing me to to dislike it, and his could be something different. But it, it just shows you that you can win the the biggest jump race in the world, but it doesn't doesn't help nor prolong your career and it can't change your mind when when you've when you've decided on on what you're going to do well it's it's fantastic that you have found such a such a good place now um how have you how have you found the the experience of riding through riding through lockdown has it has it helped you 
Um, actually, the, not that I had a reason to have a break because I only just came back, but it was actually nice to, to, to get a break in the summer. Um, not sure if that's ever, ever anything that's going to change. I know there'd be a few jockeys that would enjoy a month off in the summer just to just to have have some actual time off, but it, it was nice. Um, but uh, as I say, just only just came back before COVID, and so it was it was bad time in that in that respect. We'd we'd had a good season, um, Sandy and I, you know, had a, a good few winners, and we've been very lucky that we've we've resumed the same 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 form after we after we started racing again, which is which has been great, and long may that continue. And do you have single ambitions? Do you have do you have set targets, or do you just take day at a time? Um, well, my first target was to to pass the, the amount of winners I had last year, and I, I did that just the other day at, at Musselburgh. Um, so that's that that was the main target. Other than that, uh, you know, it's just keeping keeping owners and trainers happy and and riding as as well as I can. Um, uh, that is that is the the main goal for me. I don't try and say that I'm going to ride a certain amount of winners because you, the, the, as soon as you start putting targets like that, you, you maybe start to force it a little bit, and I don't want to do that. I just want to enjoy it and, and just take what I can get. Ryan, it's fantastic to see you in in such good form and such good heart. Uh, fingers crossed that the the final part of that three card trick can come off. Thanks so much for talking to me this morning. Thanks, Nick. Thank you very much.